Welcome to College Algebra, Module 1, Topic 1.2, Visualizing and Graphing Data. Objective 1 deals with one variable data. This is data that can be given in a single list. When looking at a list of data, there are certain things we're going to be looking at. The maximum value, the minimum value, the mean, median, and mode, and the range. The maximum value is the largest number in the set of all values. Sometimes we'll just call that the maximum. The minimum or minimum value is the smallest number in the set of values. The range is the difference between the max value and the min value in the list. The mean or the average is the average of a list of numbers and to find the average you add all the values and divide by the number of values. The median is the value in the middle of a list when the list is arranged from smallest to largest. If you happen to have two middle numbers, then add the two middle numbers and divide by two. The mode is simply the number that occurs the most in a set of data. You could have more than one mode or you don't even have to have a mode. Let's do some examples. Find the maximum value, the minimum value, the mean, the median, the mode, and the range of the set of data. Round to the nearest tenth if necessary. To find the maximum value, it's not necessary to put the numbers in order from smallest to largest. The maximum value is just the highest value, which would be 19. The minimum value is the smallest number, which would be 3. The mean is the average of all the numbers, which means we would have to add them up and divide by the number of values. One, two. There are eight values, so we are going to add up all of the eight numbers and divide by eight. So that would be the sum of all numbers divided by 8. So when you add all numbers, you get 85 divided by 8. 85 divided by 8 is 10.625. So to round that to the nearest tenth would give us 10.6 for the average. Once you write the numbers in order, you need to make sure that you've got them all. If you started with eight values, you need to make sure you've still got eight values. That's the most common mistake for finding the median is you leave one of the numbers out. In this case, we do not have one middle number, so we're going to add these two middle numbers up and divide by two, which would give us 22 over two, which is 11. So the median is the number 11. The range of the set is the max value minus the min value, or it's the difference between the highest and the lowest. So if the highest was 19 and the lowest was 3, that means that the range is 16. Okay, let's do the same example, except this time let me show you how to do it on your calculator. So to start with, you're going to go in to stat, this is where you're going to enter your values. So you press stat and then we're going to edit the list. So we're going to choose option number one and we're going to put the numbers in the L1 column. So we have 15, enter, 19, enter, 6, enter. So once we get the last number in, Notice if I put the arrow back on the last number, it tells us that there are eight numbers in this list. Now we're going to go back to stat, but this time we're going to slide to the right to calculate, and we are going to calculate the one variable stats. So num when you press number one, then you press enter. So when we put it in our calculator, notice the first value, the X bar. That is the average or the mean, which is 10.625 or to the nearest tenth would be 10.6. The second value on the list 
the sigma x, that means the sum of all the x values. On the previous page when we added the eight numbers, we got 85, so that's what that number is. The rest of the numbers are more statistics. Now if we arrow down, that will give us the minimum value, the median, and the maximum value. So on our list, the maximum value is 19. The minimum value was 3. We just said that the mean, which is our x bar, is 10.6. The median on your calculator is, the, is in between the max and the min, so the median is 11. So the only thing you're going to have to calculate on this is the range which remember the range is the max value minus the min value which would be 19 minus 3 which would be 16. Objective 2 is on the distance formula. The distance between two points x1 y1 and x2 y2 is given by the distance formula. The distance formula says that d is the square root of the second x value minus the first x value squared plus the second y value minus the first y value squared. For an example, find the distance between negative 5, negative 1 and negative 13, 7. If you refer that back to your graphing, here's your two points. So you're trying to find the distance between those two points. So we can name these numbers x1, y1 for x from the first point, y from the first point. The second order pair would be x from the second point and y from the second point. So when we plug it in the formula, the second x value is negative 13 minus the first x value is negative 5 then we're going to square that. The second y value is 7 minus the first y value is negative 1. So when we simplify that, negative 13 minus a negative 5 becomes negative 13 plus a positive 5, which gives us negative 8, and we're going to square it. 7 minus negative 1 is 7 plus a positive 1, which is positive 8 squared. Now remember when you do negative 8 squared that means negative 8 times negative 8 which is 64 plus another 64 which gives us the square root of 128. Most of the times on your homework it's going to ask you to give the square root of 128 as a decimal. So when we plug it in, in our calculator we would get 11 point 3137 or to the nearest tenth would be 11.3. Sometimes it might ask you to leave your answer in simplified radical form and in that case we take the 128, rewrite that as a perfect square if possible which would be 64 times 2. Then we can separate that which would be the square root of 64 times the square root of 2 the square root of 64 is 8, and then we leave the square root of 2. Objective 3 is the midpoint formula. The midpoint, or the center point, of the line segment joining two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, is given by the midpoint formula, which says for the x value, add your x values, divide by 2, and for the y value, add your y's and divide by 2. The example now is find the midpoint of the line segment joining negative 7, negative 8, and 3, 0. Now on your quiz, you will not be given the midpoint formula nor the distance formula, so you need to make sure that you know what those are. So there's x from the first point, y from the first point, x from the second point, y from the second point. Plug in those numbers in, we get negative 7 plus 3, divide by 2, add your x values, 
add your y values, negative 8 plus 0 over 2, which would give us negative 4 over 2 and negative 8 over 2, which would simplify to give us negative 2, negative 4. Negative 2, negative 4 should be located exactly halfway between your two original ordered pairs. Now another example. The enrollment at Cleveland College in 1980 was 1,600 full-time students. In 2010, the enrollment was 3,200 full-time students. Estimate the number of students in 1995. Now in a situation like this, we often assume that between the two numbers, there was a constant steady rate. So if we had 1980 here, and the enrollment was 1,600, and we had 2010 out here, and the enrollment was 3,200, if we look at that path, then we would assume that in 1995, which is exactly halfway here, would be the exact halfway point here. So this is an example of a midpoint. So add your x values, divide by 2. So the first ordered pair was 1980, 1600. The second ordered pair was 2010, 3200. So add your x values, which we really don't have to do because we know that 1995 is halfway between those. But then add your y values, 1600 plus 3200 divided by 2. So that would give us 1995 here. This would give us 4800 divided by 2, which is 2400 here. So the estimated number of students in 1995 would be 2400. Objective 4 is two variable data. Sometimes there is a relationship between the values in two different lists. We can use different methods to write these relationships. We can use ordered pairs, tables, scatter plots, and other graphs. Ordered pairs, when a value from one list is associated with a value from another list, an ordered pair XY is formed. The first number, or the X value, must come from the first list, and the second number, or the Y value, must come from the second list. A relation is any set of ordered pairs. Objective 5, domain and range. The domain of a relation is the set of all first values in the ordered pairs. We usually use the X values to represent the domain values. The range of a relation is the set of all second values in the ordered pairs, and we usually use the y values to represent the range values. Example, find the domain and the range of the relation of the set of ordered pairs 7, 3, 11, 8, 10, 1, and 10, 6. The domain is the set of x values. So the domain would be the numbers 7, 11, 10, and 10. We don't have to write a 10 again. So the domain would be the set of numbers 7, 11, and 10. The range is the set of y values, which would be 3, 8, 1, and 6. Notice it does not matter which order we put them in as long as we list them and we don't list them more than once. Now when we talk about viewing graphs and points on our calculator, we need to be talking about the standard viewing window, which is what's shown on your calculator. When you press window on your calculator, that gives us numbers. The x min is the minimum value of x shown on the x-axis. x max is the maximum value. The x scale is the distance between the tick marks on the x-axis. The y min is the minimum value of y. 
the y max is the maximum value, y scale is the distance between tick marks on the y axis. The x residual is how the tick marks correspond from the x's related to the y's. We will often use the notation below to represent the standard viewing window. So if you saw this notation, this means that our graph would go from negative 10 to 10 on the x-axis with a tick mark at every one. The negative 10 to 10 over here means that the y value will go from negative 10 to positive 10 also with a tick mark at every one. So how many tick marks would be on the positive x-axis? Well, positive means from 0 to 10. So if you're going from 0 to 10 and there's a tick mark at every one, then there would be 10 tick marks on the positive x-axis. Now to get this standard viewing window on your calculator, so you will go to zoom up at the top. Number 6 is standard. And when you do that, that will allow you to reset your window to this negative 10, 10 by 1 every time. The alternative is if you go to window and then you just manually input all the values. So what would the window negative 20, 25 by negative 10, 50, 10 look like? Well, if you did it on paper, it would be negative 20 to 20 on the x value a tick mark at every 5, so we would have 5, 10, 15, 20, negative 5, negative 10, negative 15, negative 20. Negative 10 to 50 on the y-axis means that your lowest value is negative 10, so we really wouldn't even have this number down here. It would just start right here, and then it would go up to 50, and every tick mark is 10, so it would be 10, 20, 30, 40. 50. So that's what your standard window would look like, or that's what your window would look like on your calculator. So to change that on your calculator, you're going to go to window, and then you're just manually going to enter them in there. Negative 20, enter 20, enter 5, enter, negative 10 is already there, 50 and 10. Now when you press graph, there's your window, which looks sort of like what our picture looked like when we drew it. Then the question is, how many tick marks are on the positive y-axis? Well, the positive y-axis starts at 0 and goes to 50. So we've got 50 divided by 10, because that's your tick marks. So there would be 5 tick marks on your positive y-axis. Objective 7 is graphing and plotting ordered pairs. We can do this on paper or we can do it on the calculator. In order to do it on paper, we need a couple of things. We need the minimum x value. So your minimum x value would be negative 100. We would need the maximum x value. The maximum x value is 40. We would also need the minimum y value, which would be negative 20, and we would need the maximum y value, which would be 80. So now we need to go through and find a good viewing window. I would say for our x's, we could go from negative 100 to 40, probably a tick mark. We could actually do a tick mark at every 20, so that would be 20, 40. It would be negative 20, 40, 60, 80, and negative 100 way back here. Our y value, same thing. We could have negative 20 down here and 20, 40, 60, 80 here, and now we're ready to plot those points. The first ordered pair would be 10, 35. So over 10, up 20, 40, so somewhere right in there between 30 and 40. Negative 20, 80 would be back 20, up 80. 40, 15 would be over 40, 
almost up to the first tick mark. Negative 100, negative 20 would be down here. And 1070 would be over 10, up almost to 70. That's what our picture would look like. This time let's do it again, but let's use it on the graphing calculator. Okay, so let's find our lowest and highest X and Y values. The minimum X value is 28, so let's just choose maybe 20. That would cover it. The highest X value would, is 47, so we could go all the way up to 50. Our Y min goes all the way down to negative 9, so let's just choose negative 10. And our highest Y value is 37, so we could choose 40. As long as all of the ordered pairs fit somewhere in that window, we're good. So we're going to go up here to Window, and we're going to change the X min to 20, and we're going to change the X max to 50. The X scale, let's put it at 10, since those are nice numbers. The Y min would be negative 10, and the Y max would be 40. Same thing, we could do our Y scales at 10. When we hit graph, there's our viewing window. But now we need to put the ordered pairs in there. So we're going to go into stat and we are going to edit. Let's clear that out. Now to clear the list previously, go up to L1 and press clear. When you press enter, that clears the list. As a note, don't hit delete because then it deletes the entire L1 column. So our X values are 29, 34, 47, and 28. Now enter the Y values. So once you get all of those entered, you're going to go back to up above the Y equals, notice it says stat plot. So we are going to go second stat plot. We are going to choose enter to select number one, then we're going to choose enter to turn them on. Now notice the next line, it's ordered pairs or different kinds of graphs. Well, we just want to plot the scatter plot, so we are going to just leave it as that. So now when we come over here and press graph, there's the scatter plot that shows those four ordered pairs. Now let's look at drawing a line graph. The following table shows the number of computer sales made at the computer by over five months. Use the time on the horizontal scale or your x-axis for your line graph and construct a line graph. So let's just do this on our calculator. Okay, first we need to set up our viewing window. So I'm going to go to viewing window and let's just run the x from 0 to 10 but we need to run our Y values. The lowest Y number is 426. The highest is 1054. So we could set our Y values as 400 and 1100. Probably need our tick marks to be, we could do them at 50. Once we do that, we're gonna hit second quit to get out of that window. Once we press stat, if you'll remember, we still have values in our list. So I told you in the previous screen we could go up to where it said L1 and hit clear. An alternative is to just go ahead to number 4 that says clear list, and we want to clear what's in L1, so we're going to go second L1 and second L2 because we know we had values in L1 and L2. So when we press enter, that's another way to clear your lists. So we're going to go to stat and we're going to edit and we're going to enter those values in our lists. Okay, so once we enter the values, we are going to go to second stat plot. We are going to select one to enter, select one to turn it on. Notice we're still on the dots. So for the next one, when we hit enter, or when we hit arrow down, that highlights our dots. We can go over to the next one and press enter, and that is a line graph. So now when we graph, there's our graph connected 
all the little dots with a line. Okay, one more example. The worldwide cigarette sales in trillions is given by the chart below. Determine the max and min values for each variable in the table. So the minimum x value is 1950. The maximum x value is 2000. The minimum y value is 1.7 and the maximum value is 5.5. Use these results to find an appropriate viewing rectangle. Well, we can go from 1950 to 2000. That would be good. So if we wrote it in their format, it would be 1950, 2000, with a tick mark at probably every 50. And then the y values would be probably 1 to 6, with a tick mark at every 1. Make a scatter plot of the data. Remember, you're going to go into stat. You're going to enter all of the values. Then you're going to go to second stat plot, which was your second y equals. Hit enter, enter, and then graph. And then you're going to make a line graph of the data, which basically means connect the dots with straight lines. So first thing we're going to do is set our viewing window. So our window is going to go from 1950 to 2000 with an X scale of 50. Then we're going to do our Y values from 1 to 6 with a Y scale of 1. Then we're going to go into our stat and we're going to edit. Oh, we forgot to clear. So I'm going to go up to L2, press clear, enter, go over to L1, press clear, enter. Now we're going to enter the X values and then we're going to enter the Y values. Once we get the numbers entered, we're going to go to second stat plot, one to enter to select one, enter to turn it on. Because we're already on line graph, we can just leave it at line graph, press enter, and there is our graph that shows that the trends in cigarette sales increased very strongly for a while, but then has started to level off. You are now ready to do the homework for Module 1, Topic 1.2 in my math lab. Once you have scored at least a 90% on both of these homework sets, 1-1 one, one, and 1-2, one, you will be ready to take the Module 1 quiz. Remember, you must have notes from both sections in order to take the quiz. And the quiz must be taken on campus with your instructor or in the lab so that they can enter the passcode. If you have any questions, let us know.